Okay guys, this is a video of me uh, attempting to install uh, the cabling for uh, my pod lights, basically. I uh, had them before on my 22 Maverick FX4. Now this is going to be on a 23 Maverick Tremor. Um, similar setup, similar company. It's the Nylight uh, Light Company. And we are going to be uh, installing and running these wires. Just to show you real quick how I'm basically thinking of doing this. First, you do have the fuse that comes with the uh, wiring harness, and that is going to get bolted onto that ground right there. Ultimately, you will see the power and uh, ground onto the battery, and then eventually we're going to tuck these cables behind, possibly here, running it all the way down, and then the excess wire is going to go through the inside of the hood. You can see it right there and ultimately should pop out right there and i've already basically started that process you can kind of see it somewhere in there you may not be able to see it's too dark but there it is and the power switch which is gonna run through there it's gonna run through the fender you're gonna see it pop up through here and if you can tell i ripped off a little cap and that hole will lead into the underfoot well it should allow me to run the wire underneath here push it through the crevice and then have the switch right here so it's not going to be you know professional obviously people that want to do it professionally can do a cutout of the plastic i don't want to do that i'm more of a plug and play and leave it as stock as possible without actually carving up my vehicle um just want to show you a few basic steps if you haven't you know had a chance to try this on your own or if you just want to see a simple easy way without you know carving into your car so for the most part you can feed it as far as it can go just by you know pushing the cable through i do have this metal that's going to allow me to reach in and kind of pull the, the cable a little further. Sorry for all the noise, but just want to get you guys an idea of how that's going to work and what I'm using to kind of pull it out completely. So again, the wire that I'm using is this super bendable, easy, super flexible metal that I have. It's scrap metal that I just found that I've had for years. A lot I all I used it for was to kind of wiggle it through just to make sure that there's nothing that's hitting and that allowed me to feed it further more and then finally just used it to fish it out and pull the uh, the rest of the wire out so that should allow me to I don't know if you can see the brackets there but I'm gonna eventually wire it up to that and then hopefully reach out and wire it over there like I said this extra piece should be tucked into it this plastic i think i did that's where i did it the last time uh these these bolts right here like hand tighten from the factory you can see that you can just remove them just with your fingers because that's how they came from the factory you can lift that up run the wire behind it just to keep it up and out of the way and you will see me like i said plug this in it does come with a fuse um right there and then like i said the relay is right there Okay, this is just to give you an example, an idea of what I was running before. These are the Nightlight. They're the hybrid spot and floodlight. Uh, these here are the spotlights. That right there is the floodlight. And these were, you, know, you kind of have to crimp them together to kind of get them to work. And they work just fine, especially for somebody who, you know, isn't an expert at wiring. He's just a DIY kind of person. And these were the mounts that I got from Nightlight as well. No, very basic, very... I mean very useful for what they are uh, I did the washer the extra washer just for you know just because but the ones that I got are basically exactly the same to so these these apply pressure to this plate then they have this rubber to kind of bite onto the hood but I have noticed that this rubber is not as strong as I would hope it to be the main issue that I had with these night lights you know it wasn't really the light output they're they very sturdy and they work really well is that this little annoying uh, 
I guess, defect in the design is that both lights come with the uh, wire on the same side, which I felt was annoying. Uh, but once you actually have them positioned the way you want them, I mean, they're not going anywhere. They have taken a little bit of a scuff from garage door closing on them, but that's about it. Overall, no water intrusion. The lights have worked just fine. Had them on my Suburban. Had them on my trunk on the uh, FX4. And now I'm switching these out, even though they still work, for a new version of the night lights. This is how they look. And you can get a comparison of what they are. A lot smaller. I went for a more floodlight look. And if you look at them side by side, massive difference. And you can see the position these a lot differently than these but ultimately they're gonna go on the exact same type of mount and the biggest difference of all is that it's all plug-and-play it all comes ready to get plugged in where this you have to wire it in and now I did leave everything loose enough to where I can reposition this to make it easier to uh, to bolt on and i will leave it loose enough so that i can position the lights either straight forward or as a ditch lights that i'm going to be actually using these for okay so the bottom bolt here uh, that's going to be a 13 millimeter and this one here on the side is a 10 millimeter so i'm just going to get this tightened up real quick and i'll be back all right so this is how it basically ended up going um, i did undo the ground but i didn't need to uh, at least not for the relay that I was hoping to use. Uh, I did uh, take off the ground, set it aside so that I could still work with the battery without any major issues. Ended up putting the relay this way. As you can see, just did a 10 millimeter screw. Uh, just so you guys can see, that's a 10 right there. 10 millimeter. Undid that, put the relay around the, the, the ground as well onto that same one and then ultimately ran the positive to another 10 and I was still able to clip the battery back on and I just kind of forced the wires to kind of go up and over here and up and under here down and under there um, that way it kind of stays within this realm I did undo this uh, another 10 mil I believe again these are hand tightened so I just did the same thing I just retightened it with my hand uh, ran the cable under there that's where the plug is gonna go that's the on and off switch and then just ran it over here just made sure that it was gonna not rub on anything down there and then ultimately like I said I ran the wires in through the hood so you got one over there coming out of there where the washer fluid hose is same thing here washer fluid hose runs through there it's, a, it's just a slightly bigger hole and then they are a little loose over here but you know it is what it is i did run it through this little flap just to keep it under I ran it through under the and behind the shock tower and that runs through there under here again 10 mil just hand tighten the one of the best parts of this was that the cable that runs from the battery down to this side fits perfectly behind this molding and it almost clips into place like as if it was meant for it so you can see that's why i ran it and it helps that it's pushing in the clips it runs behind there there it is runs behind there there it is Same thing over here, could be done a little bit better. But again, right there and right there. And back there, so again, all these wires are underneath here. So they all split into one. So it goes from the relay to the actual lights down that way. From the relay 
to the ground and the positive from the relay to the switch and it goes down that way so just position it properly and i'm telling you it's almost like it's just everything just lined up perfectly for this to fit right in there and if i pull it some more it could make it just that much more snug but i mean i don't think it gets any better than than that as far as the truck being designed in a certain way to work with whatever you need to do so that's all wired in using my makita but yeah just don't mess with the ground i believe on the first go around i did use that for the relay i just don't recall how i did it but i ended up going again relay to the ground everything all in one just to use the least amount of bolts i believe that was a 13 and those are 10s all right in the end you just basically tuck the wires as best you can you can pull them through so again you have to go through that you cut a hole in there you can actually split the cable or unplug the plug basically um, and you just have to make it big enough to uh, make it fit the connection then you can slide it through I did leave some excess cable just tucked in the fender well and I pulled back so that that snugs up and then that feeds under there you can see the cable right there and see if I can show you the rest. Now yeah, well, it's pretty tucked in there. But you feed it through. Everything should be wired up. And that should be on right there. And those are the lights right there. I did have to swap out the fuse, swapped out the blue for the red because it did blow the fuse. 